everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, his name is Bricky, and it's the end of the month, and that means Kiriath is here. Oh boy! But before that, if you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast, and maybe you want to support us, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers as they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of of our posters in crispy digital HD format. We have the, on the Adric side, we have the, ooh, those watchers are, mm, we are watching. And we also have the Detective Ridiculous Become Ungovernable poster. Both fantastic. Uh, and yeah, patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous. Where could you buy a physical copy of these posters, Bricky? Uh, you could just buy them over at orchidate.com. Link in the description. But I, I will say we are uh, we're making some some waves in the in the site. Uh, we we might actually uh, be be moving be moving the, the domain name and stuff to so it's a little bit easier for you all to grab and uh, oh. and find. So just some just some things happen and just some things. Um, cool. Yeah, some neat stuff. So you know we're, we'll get there in a, in a bit sometime soon. But uh, but yeah, big ups, big thumbs up, happy days. Uh, Orchid.com. Yeah, Check out the description. Good stuff. And uh, read War Boss. That's our book club. Is War Boss. Oh yeah, that's something I've totally been doing. We always wait till like the last week, anyway. Yeah, we usually do. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, uh, who's the man in the walls? Am nice. I still in the wall? Do I not have my own little, like, doorway now? Just a little... Trap. Well, no, oh, you, okay. you, you have, like, you're up on a wall that has, like, a frame around it, and we hit a buzzer on the frame, and then you pop out. You've got a dedicated spot now. No, 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 no. You're, 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 you're not going stupid enough, DK. Um, you know, you know... <laughs> Show me how it's done, Bricky. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'm an expert. Uh, have you seen those memes recently of, like, the foyer thing above the front door where there's just, like, nothing there? Like, what do you put up there? Yes. No. Yep. Okay, okay, good. Because I'm like, th- th- we're, I mean, he is... Oh, I almost epic embed failed myself. Thank. Oh, thank goodness. Um, that was close. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at Kiriath here, uh, much like his countryman. I'm sure, I'm sure he's a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, and oh so boy. I just think we just, we just, <laughs> oh, we just stick him, we just stick him in the under the stairs nook. So he's like, oh, he lives under the stairs now. Okay. Yeah. I'd be yeah. okay with that, actually. That looks quite comfy. If it's that Yeah, that one that you one. posted doesn't look that awful. That looks yeah. kind of cozy. Okay, hold on. So, I, fu- I, I, found, I found a better one for him. There we are. Still kind of cozy, even are. though it's made for a dog. That's kind of a cozy looking uh, spot it's, to just it's chill. Pretty good. And, you it's know? pretty good. Yeah. I realize but I'm opening myself up to... You could um, do a fast... lot worse than that. Uh, for, I mean, definitely. Have you seen the rental market in this country? It's That's <sighs> like... That is a lot a month that it's so nicely brother (laughs) i'm gonna open myself up to potentially a lot of ridicule here because i'm assuming that you won't have heard of wallace and gromit oh i know oh no no. wallace and gromit was popular enough in the states okay awesome i kind of envisioned it being a thing of when it's when it's my when it's my turn to host Bricky pushes a button and I fall out of a hatch in the ceiling <laughs> and get dressed on the way down. Ah, oh, yes. The, yeah, the, the, the machines trousers are coming all... over and the machine puts the, the top on. I just kind of, I, I was envisioning that. That that's. I that's like that fantastic. one better, actually. That, that let's let's go with that one. For Cheese sure. Gromit. My I'm so glad that made it. Gromit. Hopefully, around the world, Wallace and Gromit is amazing. It's what? the best. I was actually shocked because like, I, I remembered little bits of, of Wallace and Gromit. And so I actually rewatched all of it, like maybe three to four years ago. And I didn't realize all of it was basically four episodes. You know, like it was it's it's very yeah. at the time. It's like very small. It's, it's like um, I watched a shitload of Mr. Bean when I was a kid and I didn't realize Mr. Bean was like one season. It's like 15 yeah. episodes and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the time we just do. We just like do four to six and then we never touch it again that's it finished wow it's done all of this sounds like very popular media you know like popular tv shows and movies or something carry off what 
what a segue. What an amazing... I, I, I Why, can, thank can you. you, can you I, tell... I had no idea what was going on today, so I just shot in the dark, you know what I mean? <laughs> can, you, can you tell GW to maybe do only one one to six episodes on Horus Heresies? Because I'm not going to read all of that. <laughs> there's too much i'm not Same. gonna i'm not gonna do that man <laughs> there's like over 20 books right there's, there's like 50 50 it's so much it's so, they, originally they're only gonna do a few and then it just ballooned and went extremely out of control like well. the end of the death is literally like the siege of terror basically and it's like three books anyway i'm the sorry final, the final arc is like 13 books and it's for one fight it's it's oh, ludicrous. Wow. All right. Anyway, Kiriath, what's up? We're going to jump in with a quote, as we as we normally do. And this mm. one, I think, I think this is possibly the shortest quote that that you'll have had. Just just blanket statement. I I'm I'm struggling to think of a time where a quote could have been longer than this. So, are you ready for the quote? Yes. Hit us with your best shot. Fire away. We're mm. leaving. Yeah, oh, I love that quote. It's my favorite. It's so We're good. leaving. It's so yep. good. It, it's just w- let's watch Lawrence Fish. It's Lawrence Fishburne, right? Yeah. Watch yeah. Lawrence Fishburne just like watch this horrible chaos fueled <laughs> ship slam the table, uh, turn it off, and be like, "We're leaving. We're out." Just, just so deadpan. It's great. Yeah. Good. It's- it, it, the exact reaction everyone would have is just, "We are." Mm. It's so relatable, and it's the most. It is the most like I think the most <laughs> realistic reaction of any character in any horror film ever. Just the immediate oh, yeah. decision: we're leaving, and then as they're talking about leaving, and the uh, and the the discussion comes up of well, you can't leave. This is my ship. We're supposed to examine it. Not just are we leaving? We're going to launch tac missiles at it until we are completely satisfied <laughs> that it's been destroyed. So not mm-hmm. just we're getting out of here, we're also going to obliterate it at the same time. Absolute, what a legend of a captain. <laughs> so good. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It's Agreed. Such a, it's such a good, because in, in, he, he just kind of like begrudgingly deals with, um, oh, what's, is Sam, Sam, Sam Neil? No. Yeah, Who's Sam Neil. Uh, Sam Neil. Yeah, the um, Jurassic Park guy. Yeah, yeah. Um uh he just kind of begrudgingly deals with his scientific stuff for the most part the entire movie until then where he's like I don't give a shit. <laughs> like my <laughs> yeah. mind is made up. Which is so, good because for the for the most part um Event Horizon is it, it's not filled with the best character decisions uh, of a movie. Yeah, probably not. There's some there's some there's some questionable stuff going on. It's true. I I try and put that down to just the overall weird, chaotic atmosphere of the ship. And thinking about it, we should probably clarify that what we're going to talk about today is films that are 40k but not 40k, or are in some cases very heavily related to 40k, and in fact have kind of contributed to that universe in some. I was going to say small. But in a couple of cases, very, very big ways. Um, so we've got things like Event Horizon. We've got Starship Troopers, Dread. There's also Dune, which has to be mentioned. Although uh-huh. technically uh-huh. the film, either uh-huh. the 1984 one or the or Dune Part 1, the more recent one. Or Dune Part technically... 2 that came out yesterday or like oh, just yeah. recently. Part yeah. two that, that comes out March recent. 1st. My sister saw it yesterday night. Oh, oh! She Are lives in Los wow. Angeles. She lives in Los Angeles. I think she got an early screening. Oh yeah, she did get an oh, early screening. Okay. Yeah, she okay, did. Cool. I just I remember seeing promos that were like three oh one. She she says it's very very good. Nice. She liked it a lot. Nice. Which is good. I remember I I enjoyed part one when I first watched it, and I tried rewatching it, and I cannot get through it without falling asleep now. So. That's because you're Zoomer brained. Um, me? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> of all uh, people, me? I, I actually, not to derail us too soon, but this is what Kiriath episodes normally are anyway. That's fair. Um, Pretty much. Doom Part 1, I actually, I actually liked a lot too, because I, I am I'm a huge Denis Villeneuve whatever simp. I love all of his films. Such a simp, can't even say his name. <laughs> I, I, he's like French-Canadian, I don't know, I gave up. Um, it's okay. 
I love like all of his films. I, I don't think there's a single movie of his I dislike. I, I watched the Jake Gyllenhaal Spider Enemy One Arrival fucking Prisoners so on. Um, I really like Dune Part One. I like that it was those really slow burn movies a lot. But I hate that it's like it's literally just half a film. It's just half yeah. a movie. It just ends. I'm like, oh okay, it's just over. Yeah, it's it's a whole lot of setup for like the main bit, which it does really really well and it's still really really good but it is definitely like okay all of that was interesting but it feels like things are about to get incredibly interesting oh oh there's the credits okay i guess we'll guess we'll wait a little bit for the next one and hope that it was as good if not better because i really want to know what's happening i mean even though i'd read the books and sort of knew what was happening i still was like but but next one now please next can we have the thing straight away can we just stitch the two mm-hmm. together and have a really oh okay no we're gonna have to wait the um... so 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 should we go into how dune is kind of like uh contributing to 40 40k... well i mean obviously it is but that's the point of today's episode right and since we're talking about dune you know it's... right because because we're not talking segue, right we're not talking necessarily about movies and things that took from 40k unlike that dog shit rebel moon absolute travesty of a <laughs> I film was gonna ask if we were gonna by, talk about that movie too because that is so like Zack Snyder brother. the absolute hack that he is um <laughs> but I'm, we're, we're we're talking about films that in a sense uh could either be 40k parallel like accidentally like the universe yeah yeah or yeah, yeah. directly contributed to it like sure starship troopers and judge dread Yes, yeah. So with with Dune specifically, it's a little bit of a cheat putting the putting the films on the list because technically the films don't actually have that much in common with 40k, but what they lead up to was a massive influence on the Warhammer 40k universe. So I mean, stop me if a few things sound familiar. There's the <laughs> God Emperor of the Imperium. Uh-huh. Um there is a war against artificial intelligence. Ah. There is a uh, a complete blanket ban on artificial intelligence or thinking mm. machines. Mm. There, mm. Yeah, there mm-hmm. are yeah, heard about that things one. like yep. psychers. There are oh. navigators that allow the Imperium to go from one place yeah. to another in space. There's and they need lot. the spice. Could could there perchance be like fam- like familial houses that make up like? Factions, perchance, like could that be a thing? That there, there is. It's oh my, yeah. Yeah, oh there, my there god! Actually is. Wow! So much of like when you look at the the kind of some of the bigger parts of what makes June June, and then look at Warhammer Forty K, there is a whole lot of like copy my homework, but make sure that it you know <laughs> looks different. Which to be copy fair, copy my homework, but don't make it obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, though I'm, I will say though, like it, Dune's a little bit of a cheat though, because Dune is often referred to as the father of all sci-fi. Like yes. everything True. stole from Dune. True. I think 40k stole a bit m- much from Dune. <laughs> like it steals a little bit more well, than most. I was but... gonna say 40k kind of steals a lot from literally every sci-fi popular media thing though to be fair it 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 does but uh, the fact that there is the god emperor of the imperium uh with the navigator stuff uh, dune's really on the nose yeah it's it it is a little more than most like their whole setting is basically look it's dune yeah that's it's it's appreciate it's uh, very appreciative to see 40k as a um to see how it's advanced outside of its Dune world and become its own kind of thing, but there's no there's no denying it's a it's original yeah. spot. Yeah, uh, but, but Dune has that hear me out popcorn thing for the exclusive, you know, with the with the gaping maw with the teeth. Oh, the dussy. Yeah, yeah. Hear me out. I, I prefer is, the I prefer the dussy. It's a sure. bit of a dussy. I I really don't like that. Yeah, I don't. It's <laughs> very creepy. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely I I, not. The memes are great, but I would never. I would I never stick never. my dick in that. Can no. confirm. Well, Jesus. How desperate whoa, 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 am I? Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you start welling me, well, Deacon. There's, well, no, there's no well. You know what's the rule? Every hole is a goal. And, you know, you know, 
how dare you? Yeah. Anyway, so moving on. What Please goals stop. are you attempting to achieve? <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes... You sometimes know. when a man loves a worm... Sometimes... Would you, would you still love me if I was a worm? Question. Ricky, I did it all for the dussy. Wow, so, this, is, this is bad. This is a typical <laughs> Kirioth episode. God damn. All, all right, right, so... I don't, what, I don't know why I do to bring this out. I don't even encourage it most of the time. Most of the so, time. So, so, yeah, we've gone way off the rails here. So Dune, 40K, obvious parallels. Obviously, yes. 40K shares a lot with Dune. Uh, segue commenced from Dussy. But there are also like quite a lot of differences. So it, it kind mm. of is easy to look at. I guess it's almost like looking at the keywords for the universes and going, well, that's the same thing. But mm. things like, I mean, just the god emperor of each Imperium are, like, vastly different entities. So the god emperor of the Imperium of Man in Warhammer 40k did not have a throne to ascend to. He had to forge the Imperium out of, you know, the splintered remains of humanity scattered across the galaxy. He had to bring everyone together in order to create an empire to begin with, whereas... In Dune, the God Emperor ascended the throne through various interesting issues and became a giant man-worm hybrid, which, you know, is, I'd say, keeps him slightly more mobile and in oh. it than the God Emperor ended up being. So I put the cover of, uh, I think it's the first edition of God Emperor of Dune um, in, <laughs> in the chat. There is. Oh, that's more... actually the God Emperor? That worm thing? Cause... Yeah. Yeah. I I, I haven't I don't know anything about Dune aside from part one, uh. So I just thought that was like a you know sandworm creature thing that we hadn't been. I didn't realize that was actually the God Emperor. I thought the God Emperor was just like oh yeah he's. I'm not gonna say I thought it was like the same thing as like the 40k Ember, but I imagine someone sort of high and mighty on that. Kind of, on that kind of sort of golden throne, as it were, that was just like, oh, I manipulate the spice. I need the spice, you know. It. I mean, to be fair, the, there is a golden throne, but the golden throne is the golden lion throne, and it sort of vanishes uh, partway through the series because Dune does like it jumps, like it it skips around. Um, to be fair, like the God Emperor of. Both Imperiums have a plan for humanity and have a plan for allowing humanity to evolve and survive and are trying to like kind of guide the the race as a whole away from extinction, but they go about it in quite different ways. And it mm. could be argued that the God Emperor um, of Dune is moderately more successful because... Well, is... I mean, it's not like the it's not like the God Emperor in 40k is wildly successful. It doesn't take a whole lot to be. Oh, definitely, right. it definitely did not go the way that he planned. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He yeah, didn't really uh, set as... a high bar for <laughs> no, humanity's no, success, right? I was about to say, like, do do the Dune because I'm familiar with like the initial story of Dune and like the movie and all that. Um, is there? Do they still have that same level of? like regression in technology and stuff or cause i don't i don't remember that being particularly present no no so in terms of in terms of the technology side of things they have the same kind of blanket ban on ai for the same reason um you know where creations of humanity turned against them and they were actually forced to go to war against them and get rid of them and from that point on it's a case of no ai no thinking machines as as it's put in the books um but they actually progress so when the books start you need navigators in order to move ships around in space and you need the spice in order to make the navigators be able to basically see the future in short glimpses it basically gives them prescience so that they can see hazards and avoid them by the time Gives them you the get old binoculars, yeah. God by the it. time you get like further on in the series, <laughs> navigators are starting to be replaced by by things that can do that automatically. So ships are starting oh. to not need navigators at all. Instead, there are ways of calculating those like those hazards, and it's actually a, a proper technological jump 
where it starts out being spice is the thing that controls everything and towards the end of the series spice is becoming less necessary for space travel and given that space travel is what is tying the entirety of the imperium together spice not being needed as much makes quite you know quite a significant difference and that's oh, yeah. due to the progression of tech plus the way that the way that they handle like a blanket ban on ai from the imperium of man to the imperium of dune is is really 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 different so the imperium in 40k just does the servitor thing don't they they just they get clones or they get criminals or they get babies and then turn them into servitors and they are used for specific tasks filled with implants and they have kind of their brain still but it's kind of wiped clean and then reprogrammed for specific tasks and and things that need doing whereas in june they have mentats who are just insanely intelligent humans and there is like a whole program of just breeding for intelligence so that uh-huh. you end up with humans who are so human supercomputers of... basically yeah pretty wow. much um i in, actually did not in, know that in the film in june part one um there's a point where you see one of the kind of assistants to uh later atreides oh the his guy who puts his eyes his yeah 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 yeah. Oh, that guy. and he calculates how much it costs them to right 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 right. yeah so he's a mentat and there are you know they are kind of the human version of of computers in that universe or like the human version of servitors where rather than just having you know like kind of not brainwashed but part cybernetic criminals and clones doing menial tasks or just doing processing for one specific thing instead you have these incredibly intelligent people who can just process information at a vast you know capacity and rate um so even that is like it's kind of they both have a blanket ban on ai but the way that the two imperiums have tackled that ban is totally different one is basically basically eugenics it's breeding for intelligence in order Mm -hmm. to create human supercomputers and the other is this guy stole something let's wipe his brain yeah and make very different yeah um and the god emperor of 40k never really wanted to be the god emperor of 40k unless i've missed something in the horus heresy where he suddenly has a change of heart he was pretty (laughs) against it um all things considered Whereas the God Emperor of Dune accepted that mantle and popularized it and made people call him that because he went full tyranny. So he ah. ruled humanity with an iron fist and basically tried to breed out of them the traits that lead to tyranny and prescience and basically just forced humanity into a position where they had to do what he said. He had full and total control, and he had his own private armies, the Saudakar and the Fish Speakers, which was an all-woman army, um, who went around and dealt with people who did not want to do what the God Emperor said. Well, this, the, I mean, well, that's this, this not is a little terribly uh... far off of like the 40k, right? Because wasn't it in Master of Mankind where he's like, "Yeah, I'm a tyrant, but I have to be a tyrant because otherwise humanity isn't gonna like." evolve and they're not gonna so i have to be a tyrant otherwise yeah. mankind is gonna go off and they're gonna you know worship some chaos nonsense chaos is gonna have an easier foothold on them so i need to be this stringent tyrant dictator otherwise humanity is gonna doom itself right i, th- I think yeah. that's, that's that's what he said in master of mankind but he's also yeah. like he's also I, i've always thought he's still always just kind of a shithead still um because yeah. like, i i always i always look back to like the last church uh you mm-hmm. know where where he's got this whole like well i know i'm i know i'm right so whatever and that's just kind of like ooh, that's just such a such a bad yeah. thing to hear you know from someone that's as strong as this mm-hmm. yeah there's there's definitely an element of well it's it's like this because i say so and yeah then that's, that's the <laughs> yeah, whole that's... reason and it's like well uh, have you got anything more than that no okay yeah. right it, it's well... it's still shitty but that's that's his justification and they're kind of yeah. similar 
Though it, it's was the God Emperor of Dune at all like because Shy makes a, a a slight like spoiler for later books. He's tyrannical for a reason, like like the whole thing. Like the Emperor was tyrannical for his own reason, but like did the God Emperor of Dune's decision to do that actually work because the emperors clearly didn't <laughs> um uh it, it did not pan out fair so. and valid <laughs> i was taking a sip when you said that <clears throat> so well i mean with the 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 god emperor of june was following like a kind of like a set of it not a set of instructions necessarily but he was following something called the golden path which is basically a series of kind of decisions and ways in which you need to alter the human race to allow them to diversify and spread out and not be confined into a small area that is, you know, ruled by the need for spice to travel. Um, so, as as Shai's just put in, God Emperor Leto II's stated goal was to teach humanity a lesson that they will remember in their bones, that sheltered safety was tantamount to utter death, however long it would be. So Wow. Teach humanity yeah. a lesson they will remember in their bones is a quote and a half. Wait, wait oh so my he, God. he was just like, hey, safety is cringe because you'll never truly be safe and it, you you have to you have to go on the offensive. Is that that am I getting that right? So it's well, it kind seems of, more like just staying to like your comfort zone. It's just like, well, yeah, you can be in your comfort zone, but then you're gonna become like static, and you're never gonna grow, and you're just gonna be this lump that never, you know. Whereas if you expand, you might not be safe, but you're growing and you're evolving. Is kind of how I saw that. Oh, so so he he chose. He was like complacent. I, I don't know complacency. if that's how. Yeah, I I don't know if that's actually how they meant it, but that's kind of how I read that little quote. Is like you, you kind of have to grow. You can't be content in just you know the now. Little uh, it, it's a little. I mean, I guess they had they had prescience. They had they could see the future, so there was like a certain level of um of uh like I guess he would know in that sense. But I, it's it sounds like the man is justifying a couple wars. The man, the man, <laughs> it, it sounds like like hey we're getting a little too comfortable let's let's begin conquest yeah it's true like, i mean that that's still you know because you want to grow and evolve doesn't mean you know you should genocide everybody else and conquer everything and you know become did, a, a a a galactic dictatorship right what was was the god emperor of dune was he was he very much like alien races are dumb we will kill them all did he do that too, or? But from what I remember, there isn't really any mention of alien races within within the Dune universe. It's all humanity. Huh. Oh, it's just other um, factions that grow from different areas. So it's it's there's just there's just a complete lack of of kind of alien context in there. It's all humans all the time um, across the entire Imperium and across the known universe that they have. Um, so for for it's weird because his approach to kind of guiding the human race was to make tyranny control and kind of remaining in one place so horrific and awful that just as a species there would be a kind of recovery from that and there would no longer be this kind of need to stay in one place and stay confined to the kind of class structure that they have and the sort of approach of like aristocracy and noble houses and stuff and instead would explore and actually try and expand and just go other places and try other things that so for the most of them like for a long time in humanity it would just be a case of life is under the god emperor you do as you're told if you don't do as you're told, you get killed, and there's nowhere to go. Wait, so by the time so... all of that is done, just as a species, the the human race would want to expand and to end the class system that led to that in the first place. 
So am I understanding it right that he was a tyrant and he made life so cringe in one place that humanity would be like, we need to get the F away from this guy and do anything else. So let's expand and grow away from this. Pretty much. Cringe. Pretty wow. much. Yeah. I mean, that's it, it, it didn't sink in until just now. And I was like, wait a minute. That's he was a tyrant they, uh... and he made life so miserable on like Terra that everyone was like, ew, let's get away from this. Oh, big, not just dumb, on, not just tyrant. on like the home world everywhere. Like the, when he oh. says, because in that quote, it's teach humanity a lesson that they will remember in their bones. He's talking huh. about a species wide, like enforced education of, hey, this is awful and you can't do anything about it or escape it. But what if you could? Ah, so okay. so he so he so did he actually make living under this awful or did he teach people like did he gaslight them into thinking it was awful? <laughs> Oh no, he was he was full like brutal regime of oppression. Okay, like, okay. He, he, he but was the, the intention... god emperor because he demanded to be the god emperor. He enforced the fact that he was the god emperor. Like he he effectively for three and a half thousand years he enforced a program of Jesus. manipulation away from traits that led to war and tyranny on like an evolutionary scale. He forced like a kind of breeding program that was supposed to free humanity from the ability to see into the future and anyone yeah. who disagreed they got either the fish speakers or they got the saudikar which were the armies of the of the god emperor <laughs> so Ooh. it was it's bad like in terms of just who was the who was the bigger asshole i would argue probably the god emperor of dune yeah yeah it, it sounds like the the god emperor of dune is absolutely the worst tyrant bar none um yeah ironic well. how ironic that the uh, that the god emperor of mankind was nicer but in, in a <laughs> sense it turned his his ending regime into I'd argue, like, w would you say that life in Warhammer as a as a human in the Imperium is worse than life in the Dune Imperium, in, in like modern time, with all the regression? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Okay, because because yeah. like I imagine the the how worthless human life is just has like no value. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you could sort of look at it and argue that the failure of the God Emperor of Warhammer Forty K has kind of led to the sort of future that humanity might have been headed towards in Dune, in terms of just stagnating, being confined uh... to one place, being ruled over by various kind of corrupt aristocratic families, reliant on mutants in order to travel from one system to another. Like, it's, it's, it's almost kind of take away the aliens admittedly but the future of 40k is not that far off probably what the future in june could have been if uh if later the second wasn't perfectly happy to go along the golden path and i mean rule over humanity in a horrific fashion for three and a half thousand years <laughs> I, I mean yeah stag stagnation stagnation and like just general um uh what is it like backward sliding is is a theme in, in most to all factions in warhammer oh, um yeah. you know like yeah. the, ne the necrons the the eldar the only people that are that aren't are like i guess like the tau the tau and the and the tyranids i suppose yeah, um tyranids are just always hungry yeah which is like partially why they're such a fearful enemy because because we don't mm -hmm. know um, but I guess that, that that makes sense. It's kind of a it's kind of neat to see how it's evolved into its own form. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It's it is definitely like the kind of surface elements look very similar, but then when you actually look at the story of them both, like the differences are are like pretty massive. Yeah. Like Games Workshop have definitely made it its own thing. And whilst there's you know there's things like you know the the Great Crusade and so on in 40k and in dune there was i mean the war against ai was called the butlerian jihad so there's like still like a religious undertone to it mm -hmm. um and there's there's things like things like psychers in the form of the i always for years i thought it was i thought it was pronounced bean gesserit which is not how you pronounce that the bene gesserit yeah 
yeah, it's it's not Bean Gesser. It Bean sounds... Gesser. <laughs> you're, be... the, um... you're you're a tax man. You're How a bean many guesser. beans in this jar? <laughs> bean so... Gesser. Is it like the, read... the the Bene Gesserit or something like that? Like like it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, you it's know? the Bene Gesserit. It's definitely not white. I mean, I, I first read Dune when I was quite young, and I remember reading it, and even then being like. I don't think that's right, but not knowing how else to approach it. So, this is, um, this is like me playing Alan Wake 2 and just being like, I'm going to get really good at saying Percale because it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've spent an awful lot of time on Dune. Should we, <laughs> yeah, we have. maybe move on to next? Uh, movie yeah thing, maybe? let's let's talk about let's talk about dread because that's that's oh, something else that yes. has quite a big quite a big if niche part of 40k was inspired by by dread but yeah. there are there are those who think that basically it, it's kind of been ripped off you know that yeah, the RBDs, things like nuts. things like the adeptus are 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 bites are bites are bites Mm-hmm. Those lads, mm-hmm. those guys. Yep, they're very close. They are. They <laughs> they're are very really close. close. And there are there are a good number of like as I was like looking into this and stuff. There are quite a few people who are like it's just a full on rip off, and technically that isn't that far off being correct because when you look at Dread, you have like where the where a lot of the stories are set, Mega City One, which is a you know vastly hive overpopulated city, right? hive city basically yeah. um you also have the judges who are judge jury and executioner and they mm-hmm. go out and, and fight the crimes with the all crimes? sorts of yep. hilarious weaponry like incendiary bullets because i don't know why you'd need those other than setting people on fire but i appreciate that that's they what exist. you need them for I, I, I man. you answered your own question <laughs> oh, my guy yeah. well, well, like, well, you, 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 yeah. you set people on fire so you can set them on fire yeah <laughs> You need those high X bolts, you know, for yeah. high explosive punching through walls and getting to your local high tiered skate park. Hollow j- hollow point is cringe. I I, I want arson joint. <laughs> <laughs> Dread does also have the psychers. That's true. Shy. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I mean, there's 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 similarities. There's a lot of similarities. But there's the a big, the big visor, big visor, open mouth is is just like that's that's like just the the shtick, right? It's all you need. Yeah, yeah. and much. the cool armor. There is an excuse, though. There is an excuse because Games Workshop didn't always make their own games. They started out basically selling Dungeons and Dragons stuff, and it was only when they started doing Citadel miniatures and things that they started to make their own games. Before they did that. They released rules in 1985 for the Judge Dread role-playing game, which oh. they licensed from 2000 AD. And from what I've read, they had a pretty decent relationship with 2000 AD. So when it came to oh. making Rogue Trader, they took inspiration from 2000 AD because they had already you know, made a game fully for that franchise and they'd also produced miniatures for that franchise as well and there was there was a couple of things that i've read that talked about rogue trader being not that far off a name for a 2000 ad comic but i couldn't called rogue trooper i think it was but i couldn't find much to corroborate that but that is one of the miniatures i've just put in the chat that games workshop made for the Judge Dread oh, role-playing wow. game. So when it came to creating things like Necromunda, where you've got a you know a planet full of vast hive cities that are full of people crammed in, who also have to eat things like corpse starch, and you know there's things like in Judge Dread where there's recycle for corpses as a form of food, mm-hmm. and you've also got the judges going around trying to keep order, and then you've got and failing. A- <laughs> And failing. Well, and I got... mean, they do keep order by, you know, killing anything that stands in their way. But, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah. If it works, you know, if it works, yeah. it works. Um, Does it, so though? It, it, I, it's kind of like... It's some it's pretty cool. undemocratic speak I'm hearing right here. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Where's three, that red three, light coming from? 380 high explosive woe upon ye. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah, when they when they gave when they introduced Adeptus um, Arbites, they didn't have models for them, so they told people to use miniatures from the Judge Dread line that they were already making, in place of the Arbites miniatures. Oh. So there's like a really kind of deep link that kind of goes all the way back to like 1985 of them already kind of collaborating in creating this game, then creating the miniatures. And then when they made Rogue Trader, when they introduced rules for that force, they didn't have miniatures for them, but they were basically already kind of the judges anyway. So they then said, you know, use the miniatures from the Judge Dread role-playing game. So it kind of is a bit of a rip-off and it is a direct inspiration, but but it's, it's like they're ripping off themselves. It's it's like <laughs> they kind of made that. They, I didn't I mean, realize were... it went that deep. I just kind of figured they were like, oh yeah, Judge Dredd is really popular and really cool. Let's make something that is loosely, obviously inspired by it, as GW tends to do. Uh, I didn't realize that it was more of a, hey, we're already making this thing. Use that until we figure out what we want to do with the uh, Arbides. Well, ironically, too, like the you don't even really need to copy Judge Dredd's style and stuff either from like the world or anything. I mean, I guess you could say that Necromunda could have been decently inspired and enforced by the whole thing. But having this yeah. just this massive, overly saturated, tyrannic, tyrannical area with, you know, very mean police officers is just the Imperium anyway. Well, yeah. yeah, kinda, basically, sure. It's yeah. already there, you know. Like it is. it's you yeah. just kinda had copied the look. And, and yeah. even and even then you still kinda well you kinda gave it your own shit. The the new RB RB's models uh, come into their own a little bit more with the, the Aquila yeah, and everything sure. everywhere. But, sure. uh, but yeah. Still a very obvious inspiration from Judge Dredd, but yeah. They've, Definitely they've done a more lot of their own of... GW spin. Yeah, they've they've definitely kind of made them their own thing at this point. Like the inspiration is still there, and you can see that it's there, but it's it's now like more of just an inspiration and less of we took this thing and made it as well. Yeah, yeah. I I've always I've always liked that link because it's it's one of those things where every now and again you're kind of especially like talking about models and stuff there will be that kind of comment of oh you can you can tell who they copied and it's like oh they kind of did but it's so much more interesting than that it kind of goes back yeah. so much further and i mean given that like in 1985 there are a good chunk of of people who just weren't even when i say weren't even born then i mean like that's a year before i was born and the number of comments that come from that sort of demographic of not knowing that that link existed in the first place is quite high. So it always makes it more fun to kind of go, yeah, but look, they were already mm -hmm. doing it kind of. They'd already done yeah. rules for a full-on RPG. They'd already been communicating with 2000 AD in order to make that. They did license miniatures. Like it's, it's I don't know. I, I like how much of it is inspired by Dread, but not just because it's like, oh, here's a cool thing they copied, but here's a cool thing they worked on and they then worked on and they were making on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is a really cool link. Also, what's Dredd's gun called? Don't the judges have special like because they're gene coded to them? Only they can fire them. And in in Dredd, you see what happens when someone not gene coded tries to fire that thing. Not is it happy. an enforcer lawgiver? Is it just called an enforcer? Oh, Shai said it's a log. Oh, great name. There's, there's. I'm well. This isn't exclusive to Dread or anything, but I was fairly certain there was a. There are guns like that in 40k, aren't there? That are like you know only the blah 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 can fire them. Uh, they're they're gene coded too. Uh, you're probably thinking of um, first heretic where the uh, custodians have gene coded weapons. Right, 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 right. They do. That that's one, and I mean, like you know, the sidearm of a law officer is just—it's just a cool thing to look at. You know, the blade, oh, yeah, the, the Blade Runner blaster in both yeah, Blade yeah. Runners is like iconic for yeah, so. Not a commentary, years. just I just think it's a cool concept and it's a cool gun, and I just I just love that vibe of like I'm the only one that can fire this, and only the law has this gun. I just I just think it's a really cool concept. I I, I must admit I've actually been uh 
I've really wanted to create a replica of the service weapon from uh, from Control for that same Ooh, reason. Oh yeah, it's just a, it's just a really weird design, and I love it. It's so strange. Doesn't it like open up and do weird stuff depending on did something? You, did you not like play Control? I played a little bit of it, but like my copy for some reason bugged out and I stopped playing it because like Aww. there was like a, a you had to fight a bunch of enemies and then go up an elevator. And I guess like one of the enemies got stuck in the elevator so the elevator wouldn't move anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. It and, has some bugs like that. Yeah. So. Um, no, yeah. yeah it, uh, did you the gun can become like a shotgun, an SMG, et cetera. And it's just like the form it takes. Uh, yeah, there like there go. it's re it's really neat but like yeah the the what is it? the the law giver is, is i'd say also very much one of those yeah oh, shy they make real guns like that that are like uh dna coded that only like uh like a like what it do you can mean? tell your handprint and and won't fire unless it's really that's a real thing or 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 do you mean like um like, like a fingerprint front, a front loaded on the Ma no, like a front load magazine, like, like like the style of the lawgiver pistol, because it, it is just bullets. <laughs> oh yeah, that is very front loaded, isn't it? Why did I not the, realize that? There are in that is true. Dragon's breath rounds do exist. Biofire. It scans your fingerprints and has a webcam that's pointed at your face and scans it. If someone else touches it, it won't fire. Cool. I, I mean, like that. that's that's it doesn't explode cool your hand concept. though. So <laughs> can, can no, you... that's true. It won't explode your hand. <laughs> Maybe one day. If yeah, one day. Can one you day. Can you imagine if it like, if it like you just like covered in blood or something, and he, like, he tries to scan your face and it can't because you just like all screwed up. I'm like, oh no, my gun. Got to got to get that retina scan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please, yep. I need this to work right now. Right this got second. Some water. All right. Any what. anything else from Dread that we need to? I think that I think that mostly covers it. I think that mostly covers it for Dread. Okay. Okay. We should talk about Starship Troopers, though. Oh, it's ah. topical right now, specifically, too. With Hell Divers, too. I love yes, liberty sir. and democracy. Yes, sir. How about a nice <laughs> cup of liberty? liberty? God damn. Anyway, go ahead. go ahead. I haven't seen Starship Troopers in a hot minute. It's I, still it's still good. I, I remember large swaths of it. I, I particularly, one of my favorite parts... There's two parts that I really like. The first part is when they're in school and they're all clearly not like teenagers because <laughs> they're obviously like 25 oh, yeah. or older. Yep. Um, and and uh, they were talking about the Hiroshima bombing and, and like the less the lesson was like, yeah, violence is awesome and we should do it again. And that was that was like the rule. That was the answer. Yeah, um about so that. <laughs> and and, the, and then the second one is this the guy is like oh excellent sir mobile infantry made me the man i am today and he's like missing both of his legs in a wheelchair oh yeah and he's got a robotic yeah. arm as well it, like just, even his yeah he's only got one of his mm -hmm. arms he's like it's horribly so... mutilated it's so funny <laughs> love that propaganda love that well the oh, film really... is like I mean, the film could basically be boiled down to this is what it looks like when guardsmen get attacked by a the high fleet. Um, yeah. And there's a little bit of... So there's a little bit of interesting parallel with kind of the armor that the infantry wear and what the it's just, it's guardsmen just of the time looks like. I mean... Because there's definite, there's definite very heavy... Definitely very heavy parallels between the models of that time and when the film was made. Um, but the film itself, like, given when it came out, when it was made and stuff, maybe not that much of an influence on 40k necessarily. However, the book absolutely is. The book has kind of become this, this like, almost like the source of a lot of, a lot of the kind of basically space marines fighting aliens or space marines fighting space bugs trope mm. that i mean is shown up in how many games books and uh and and films at this point but the books had something that the film didn't have which is effectively power armor oh so the book was published in 1959 and wow that long ago yeah and the soldiers oh, in the book 
had mech armor. They had mech suits. They effectively had Space Marine armor in 1959, which oh, makes them elite soldiers who are equipped with mechanized battle suits that give them the power of a tank. Which sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Sure. Well, I mean, mechanized power armor is used in a lot of stuff, though. Like, sure, you also have space marine armor, but I, I don't. I mean, the book yeah. really kind of puts them more as like the the space marines of forty k than the guard. Um, oh, to sure. To the extent sure. that the author didn't really like the film because it made it made the it, you know it made the human <laughs> army yeah just a bunch of idiots with. It, normal yeah. guns whereas in the book it was like a small you know a small force of power armored soldiers that could fight overwhelming odds which is effectively just what space marines are um yeah. so like there's a lot of uh there's like a lot of overlap there um mm-hmm. obviously it's shown up in other stuff as well but that's quite a that's quite a kind of key part of that novel and it became uh, like arguably the cornerstone of 40k like Space Marines being not just the poster boys, but the entire reason for the universe being the way it was. Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of parallels between something that was written in nineteen fifty nine and like a constantly <laughs> evolving universe right now. Mm-hmm. Are, are the, why why they change assume... that in the movie to make them just like the guard? Well, I, I'm assuming the um, or... I'm assuming the book is not satiric. I'm assuming it's not trying to be satirical, right? The book kind of well, because well, like like Starship Troopers was done. I forget his name. Same guy who did RoboCop, which yeah. is which is clearly a um, uh, clearly obviously also a satire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like I, I don't know if they're big Space Marine power armor guys. Then the whole you're being chewed up by the meat grinder of a fascist industry is like not present. No, it's a lot more celebratory. It, it's a lot more kind of. Like, oh, is it the opposite side of propaganda? It's, yeah, it's it's definitely oh. it's definitely not like the film in that respect. <laughs> it sounds like the guy. It sounds like the guy who made the film wanted to take the piss out of the out of the guy who wrote the book. I mean, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah. The, well, uh, <laughs> question well, mark. I like. I, I, I don't know because because I'm, I'm thinking. Um, well, I'm thinking of uh, like like Bioshock, right? Like Bioshock, it, it, it's all about uh, a- Ayn Rand's fucking um, Atlas Shrugged. That's the whole point. Ayn Rand, Andrew Ryan, Atlas Shrugged, Atlas, and it's it's like, what if we took her weird capitalist utopia and and tried to make it how it would actually happen? And it's like, look at how horrible this failure is. Like this is the concept that they decided to go with. And so it's kind of taken the piss out of her book. I, I wonder if it's something kind of similar with that. Yeah, I, I I feel like there's probably a little bit of that going on because it's it. I would argue they don't really share the same message, <laughs> or at least yeah, the messages might be similar, but not in a. One of them isn't doing it in a satirical way. It's just like, look how awesome the industrial machine is, which is or like kind of um, and like just. Isn't it great when you can when you can just blow things up to solve all of your problems like that kind of vibe? Who's the who's the writer? Was was he American? So the author is Robert Heinlein. I believe he is American. Okay, because I'm thinking he wrote this in what you said fifty nine. He would have yeah. he, he would have lived through World War Two. There's there's a very there's 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 a lot of patriotism that comes out of that because it's a yeah you know definitely. especially if if you're on the if you're on the the winning side, and yeah. so I I wonder if maybe he's like look look at how awesome the military industrial complex is we stopped the evil evil Nazis and yeah we so, literally stopped the axis of evil yeah and so maybe he he kind of wanted to and now in the nineties we're a little bit more keen on on that stuff and so he's sure. like. You know, it'd be funny. Let's just let's let's take let's take the armor from the rebels in Star Wars and send them against bugs and just watch as everyone dies and the main character ends up with the girl he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so harsh. It's so yeah. harsh. It's so funny though. I I laugh hysterically at that movie in like a horrible, <laughs> messed up way. Yeah. Also, just just something that I think every time I watch it. 
how did the bugs launch the asteroid? Because it, it feels it's like it's not it. important. <laughs> it's it not like important. It. Don't think I about mean, it. Don't don't yeah, think well, about it too hey, hard. Don't think about it. What, you can get in trouble thinking about that too hard. Huh? Feel like. Think about that. Remember what? the big like sloppy saliva bug face that looks like a you know? How what, about what, that oh, part? Nobody what, talks about that part. I, it it definitely does look like that. What, what, what about happens. when they when they realize that they feel pain and they all just cheer and they're like, let's go. They can <laughs> suffer. <laughs> it's, so, oh. it's it's so good. I, I absolutely adore that film. I, I need to rewatch it that. When it's it been came a out. long it's time. Wild. Didn't Robocop also bomb? Because people just like didn't understand what they were trying. They were going for. Yeah, I think that did pretty badly on release Cult as well. Classic. And now it's that... like they are. Yeah, they're, they're proper. Mm hmm proper classics yeah well because they're like when you make a when you make a movie that's that's obviously satire you you have a huge issue of people missing the point and we <laughs> that's we true. we have seen that in warhammer plenty of times <laughs> oh yeah no yep. never when <laughs> and we're, we're even seeing it a little bit with hell divers um yeah <laughs> Curiosity. Yeah. You know Helldivers the... is so on the nose. How? But, How but do, you, not? do you know the lore of Helldivers? I know a little bit. I got okay. Let me hit you with this real quick, not to go off too off topic. Um, the the bugs, right? That we like the ex humanity expanded into the bugs' territory and started murdering them because they're in their way, etc. We found out that the bugs, when they die, produce a really powerful oil that we can use as fuel. So we. Oh. We've basically taken all the bugs and corralled oh, them oh into God. various planets and then slowly like shave off the top as they reproduce to keep our oil flowing in. The bugs just kind of broke free of their pens. That's... And that's the problem right now. Oh, boy. All right. The that's robots. <laughs> the robots were, were originally revolutionary fighters that fought against the managed democracy tyranny and became like automatons later on but they're they're they were a they're a socialist robot group that are trying to get people to leave super earth because they think they're tyrants oh <laughs> my god boy. and wow. so it's like it's clear you're clearly not the good guys yeah no that's yeah not but even it's a very bit funny <laughs> yeah that yeah that is very very clearly we are not are we the baddies Hans, are we the baddies? Are we the baddies? But it's just, it's <laughs> so, it's so funny though. Oh God. So <laughs> event horizon. Let, yeah, let's finish, let's finish where we, let's finish where we started. Oh, right, there we go. Yep. Yeah, okay. So sh just, just before we move on. So uh, Starship Trooper creator Heinlein considered himself a libertarian and thought that the world needs strong world government or otherwise the human race will destroy itself with nuclear war. Well, at he that was, time period, no. I he was he was he very much that. he was very much not a racist. To describe his view, I believe in my whole race: yellow, white, black, red, brown, and the honest courage, intelligence, durability, and goodness of the overwhelming majority of my brothers and sisters everywhere on the planet. I am proud to be a human being. Uh so okay, so okay, well, okay, this actually makes a lot more sense too because it was in the fifty nine, so we were like hyper in the Red Scare. Yeah. yeah. So he's definitely. like, we need to all come together or we're all going to kill ourselves with, with yeah. bombs. That, I, I guess given, that makes given sense. Given the time that, yeah, I can kind of see that, sure. Grand, grandpa's growing up with a with a understandable, if maybe not currently great, viewpoint on certain other yeah. countries of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of, it does, it does very much read like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does, it does. So Thanks, should, we, should we finish where we started with Event Horizon? It's much easier is, to talk about. It's fully not something that influenced 40k, obviously. Because not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Well after all of that was established. But it is borderline. I mean, it it's not actually technically a prequel. It just extremely reads like one. Due it to the... feels like it. It feels like, oh, this is how humanity found the warp. Oh my god, chaos. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, this is this is FTL faster than light. Oh, this is what happens when you dip into the warp. Wah, chaos. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Just re replace a couple a couple phrases. Add a bit more Imperium in it, and then and then slap some heraldry on it, and you and you literally just have a 
a um a derelict spaceship with a portal to the warp yeah 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 you really mm-hmm. do uh, to be fair the uh the screenwriter um philip eisner said on twitter in 2017 i played the shit out of 40k so it was definitely an influence conscious or otherwise <laughs> so, oh oh yeah. i did not know that i didn't know he said that <laughs> yep i mean oh, i would yeah. suggest i would suggest definitely influence as he says definitely oh, yeah. an influence there, there's no way 40k wasn't at least some influence like you said maybe it was unconscious because he played the hell out of 40k but uh, the influences are clear yeah definitely i mean a sh- <laughs> an experimental ship with an experimental like faster than light drive warp drive gravity drive gravity <laughs> drive, like gravity thank drive. You. <laughs> disappearing for seven years coming back and then it being full of nightmares hallucinations the crew's all gone like it really does just immediately it's like oh it got lost in the warp cool and even if that wasn't your initial thought as like i'd imagine if you're not a like 40k fan if you don't follow 40k you might just think hell which is also not that bad of an interpretation yeah definitely there's there's just something about the fact that the ship comes back like borderline sentient like actively messing with the crew of the lewis and clark who go Mm -hmm. over to investigate it the fact that it causes hallucinations that it actively goes out of its way to hurt and cause distress to the new crew it's just so it's so warp well, isn't that uh, oh, yeah. isn't that what uh, Sam Neil said? He's like, "Hell is just a word. Reality is much, much worse." Yeah. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah. That great yep. line. It's I a it's a line. really good line. I, I okay. I DK and, and Kiroth, did you guys just recently watch Event Horizon for this episode? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it's it's been a little bit since I've watched Event Horizon. It's it's pretty it's pretty present in my mind. I I remember it quite well. Um, I mean, I, I remember what happens, but I haven't watched it recently. So I must, I gotta say, um, I, it's not a, a perfect movie. I was, I was no. gonna remember if you guys, if you guys remembered at the end of the film when he's fighting, when Lawrence Fishburne's fighting Sam Neill, and they're using like the most stock punch sound effects you've ever seen <laughs> in your life. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's it's just awful. And then there's like the there's like the lady with the son or whatever who just like clearly knows she's hallucinating but just runs at him anyway and falls to her death and you're like oh my goodness gracious there's a lot of that going on but um there's there's just that that one scene where he's in the in the command throne with his eyes sewn shut and it's just it's such a vivid image it's so good yeah it's it's great i mean he he like basically refers to it as a like a, a dimension of pure chaos so even that by itself and things like the like the kind of flashes that that you get of what's going to happen to the crew when the event horizon yeah. makes the jump like apparently a, quite a lot of that didn't make it into the film like they filmed a lot more torture horror scenes oh but then, yeah yeah the 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 blood orgy as it were <laughs> yeah <laughs> to quote like, south park all the barbed wire being like round people's faces yeah. and stuff like there's apparently more of that that wasn't in the film um but Probably even that is yeah i, I, <laughs> I mean i think i, I think watched a, that a, film a, when i was quite young and that was not that was not great that that nope. scene no i i think i think maybe if they added more it would kind of ruin the uh, the magic or whatever but like j- yeah, just enough the impact of yeah. when you actually see that thing and they're like nope we're well, gone also because like if you just see enough of it then you you're left to wonder that this is just a slice and it's probably far far worse yeah so like your, your mind worse than this yeah yeah your mind's left to wander and that i think that adds a bit more of like a like a Ugh. yeah is it well that's that's kind of like the idea of what they did in uh the original texas chainsaw massacre right the door closes and you can only hear it and what your imagination makes up is way worse than anything they could actually show you right so sometimes less is more that is very true. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean it's 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 so good and it's so it's so 40k and it really does just feel like an actual full on prequel. prequel. Yeah. If if the years just lined up a bit better it'd be like, "Oh, it's it's just exactly what you would imagine 
that kind of encounter to be if you try to jump without Gellerfields. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I think that's... I, um... I wouldn't mind if a 40k movie was like sort of set up like that where it's like oh here's what happens when you don't warp with the geller field and just shows the craziness of the warp and and all that i i wouldn't terribly mind that i i mean i think i've been i've been championing the idea of if you're going to do a 40k film you need to do it super small scale and just oh, put yeah, it definitely. in the universe yeah. i i think having a, a film yeah, exactly like a, like an inquisitor whose job is just to go to like find derelict ships as an investigation and you can like get a couple of ships and they have various chaos issues. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you could have like a Nurgle ship or something. Just just kind of like get that set up, you know? Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, like, really like well. we've said before, there's no way you can do a movie that's like, look, this is the Horus Harris. You can't. You simply cannot do it. Too much stuff. But yeah, like a small scale event horizon where like an Inquisitor is like, uh-oh, that's a space hulk. Oh, uh, I guess we have to investigate would be really cool. I, I'd love the idea, or like a rogue trader or something, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the idea of, like, you do the event horizon thing, but you do it with, like, a Nurgle ship. And, and <laughs> it, it doesn't, like, look wrong on first glance, but, you know, your crew just... Like, one of your guardsmen just starts to get really sick out of nowhere, and you're like, that's oh, weird. Yeah, yeah. Why is he getting so sick? And then he just kind of slowly escalates, you know? It gets worse and worse, yeah. and it's spreading, and more people are getting it. It's like, why, why are there boils on the wall? Yeah, you, oh, you, and no. then like okay, then you go back to the ship and you all make sure you get like air purifier helmets and things like that. But then, mm -hmm. but then you know it's slow, like the, the ship starts to rot away. Just 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 like you could go really smooth and slow. Yeah, into it. yeah, that'd be such a yeah, 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 yeah. I like the, that. I like I, that it's, a lot. Chaos is insidious, and that's kind of the whole point. Mm -hmm. I would one hundred percent watch that. That actually sounds really good. <laughs> Same. Uh, well, it's funny even because... if it wasn't a 40k movie, I'd watch that. Like, even if you just were like, "Oh yeah, there's an alien plague that affects humans and like objects, like metal, and it just sort of like makes material sick." I'd watch that. I'd watch the hell out of that. I I think um I, I think that's one because if we were to garner which of the four chaos gods would have affected the event horizon, I think we would agree it would be Slanesh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah <laughs> yeah pretty clearly yeah. um yeah. but like I'm, I'm thinking of the idea of just like you have a zinch ship and then you know it, you're you have people like walking down the corridor you shoot it like that and then just in the background the wall just has like a unblinking eye staring at him as he Ooh. like as he walks past and then he might like he look behind him, him and, and then the eye is gone just like things like that because it's such a didn't we talk about like a chaos ship at some point or in some episode where they would like, no, it was, um, it's like Zinch's crystalline labyrinth where he'd like walk into a door, but the door is just a giant gaping maw oh, of yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. just don't realize it. And it just closes on you. Just like, like <laughs> weird crap like that would be so good. And I, I'm, I miss deep space horror. And you know, after a yeah. alien kind of ran, it's, it's ran it to the ground. Cause really Scott's a weirdo. Um, <laughs> but like I, I you didn't like Prometheus. Of, I okay. I actually did like Prometheus. I the the C section to get the alien out was a little weird. That I I liked Prometheus. I didn't love Prometheus. <laughs> if, if I looked at Prometheus like I'm not gonna pretend this is an alien prequel because that's stupid. It's just a cool space movie and it's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shy is right. I want a dead space movie. I just want a dead space film. Ooh, hell yeah! Yeah, that be, yeah no, that's actually a really good idea. I, oh, I yeah, love, I, I absolutely love that kind of deep space stuff. And Dead Space is probably the best deep space video game we've, we've ever gotten. So, you know. Sure. Give oh, me, so give me deep space and give me weird. <laughs> give it to me now. Give me liberty or give me deep space dread. I feel like, to be honest, there isn't just, there just isn't enough like deep space sci-fi stuff full stop. Like there just isn't enough of it. It's probably quite expensive to get those sets going, but oh yeah, and all I think probably like not all that popular either comparatively. Like I I don't know, it, it kind of feels like it kind of feels like there are some really good films that got sort of not like bad reception, but just not that many people saw it for like how good it was, mm. especially when you compare it to like I don't know. 
I don't have a problem with like the Marvel films or anything, but Jesus Christ, there are a lot of films that the are okay. The recent ones I have a problem with because the... they're terrible. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shy asked if I've ever seen the movie Sunshine. Is that the one with Kevin Spacey? No, Sunshine. Wait. Or is that Moon? I think so. Maybe Moon. I've never seen it. Sunshine Wait. is great. It's a, it's it's a little it's it's Sunshine. really really good. the The last act is a bit a bit odd. It sort of it feels like two films. Oh, I've it, heard of this it, movie. It yeah, I've heard, oh, it's Danny Boyle. Oh crap. Yeah. Sunshine? Wait, the Danny Boyle did Twenty Days Later for those of who did not. Oh, okay. Um, really? Okay, no, I, I've heard of Sunshine. I've heard it's good. I have never seen it though. Um, it's, but, de- but it's worth a watch. It's definitely worth a watch. But Train Spotting and Twenty Days Later are two of my some of my favorite films. Um, Twenty Days Later is my favorite zombie movie of all time, and so I kind of, I kind of want, I kind of want to check this one out. Okay, it's definitely okay. worth it. It's definitely worth it. I tell you what, something that is not worth checking out, but is also vaguely maybe you could call it slightly 40k related just to round things out there is a film called death watch now it is not about wow. the death watch of warhammer 40,000. it's oh. false, false really advertising Ooh, <laughs> make a death watch movie you cowards it's it's about well it's, it came out in 2002 mm-hmm. and it is set in world war one and there Love is a that. small group of british soldiers in 1917 who charge a enemy trench <laughs> and wait for rescue and okay. weird stuff starts happening like I... really really weird nightmarish stuff starts happening now okay. there's issues okay. with this film right right at least that you know you know in like the late 90s early 2000s <laughs> there was only one gun sound effect that people had access to Ah uh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, can can I can I stop you for a half second? Go for um, it. I, I, I noticed I noticed already. Andy Circus is in this film. Love me some Andy Circus. I was on the IMDb. I scrolled yes. down. Did you know section trivia? Andy Circus said in the audio commentary he has no idea what's going on in the film towards the third act. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and and you know what? That I, I I'm I'm gonna watch this movie now. I'm I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> Curious, you sold me. It's it's basically kind of like if you think about what could happen to Imperial Guardsmen on a chaos infested world, like on the kind perhaps like on a demon world or something where there is endless there's endless possibility for nightmare scenarios <laughs> and just weird warp shenanigans and you know the the actual world itself actively messing with you that's the vibe that that you kind of get from death watch it's not i'm not gonna say it's good because i would argue that (laughs) it's it's not really it feels very low budget i will say right now if you're if you're sold on the idea of andy circus um He's he's done he's done better performances. He's done Andy less Circus, sort of that? hammy. Uh, Andy shouty. Circus, Andy Circus, you'll know as the ape in Planet of the Apes. Uh, oh, he's Gollum. Gollum, Gollum yeah. as well. Oh, uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, and I know who it is now. Sorry, I just he, I didn't have a name for the face. He was also a phenomenal character in the Andor Star Wars TV show. He, uh, oh, didn't realize he was even in it. Yeah, he he plays uh, he plays one of the prisoners. He's great. He probably has the best speech in the entire entire show. Andor is excellent. I I hate Star Wars right now. Highly recommend Andor. <laughs> yeah, genuinely <Andor's> good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. genuinely worth watching. I I've don't think thought... I've ever seen him in something and didn't enjoy his role in it. Maybe not the whole movie, but his roles are usually pretty good. He he's, he's got a wild voice. Movie. He goes yeah. absolutely wild. It's 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 a sight to behold. I will say, I just I just scrolled down on the on the Death Watch page, and you know when you saw the trivia, yeah, about yeah. how he doesn't know. Have you seen the thing below that on, called on, goofs? So a very key part of this film, right, is that they hear on the radio that their squad is dead. Oh, goofs. okay. In one scene, it shows one of the soldiers finding and later talking on a radio. 
This could not be possible since radios for military field use that you could talk on did not exist until World War Two. Oh, that's, that's the kind of... of attention to detail that you should expect watching this. <laughs> Yikes. So... They should have just said it in World War II then. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I watched the All Quiet on the Rest Western Front movie that recently came out. Um, It's a good movie. Huh. I, that, I don't, I don't that really think... That like the... Um... I don't really think I have anything else to say after that. that. That's just kind of what I was going for, yeah. <laughs> Shy gave a little synopsis of Death Watch, and yes. it kind of sounds like that one... Oh, what was that uh, first-person horror game that everybody was playing where you go through the trenches? And oh, Amnesia the Bunker, I think. Yeah, that's the one. It sounds I, like that. I hear Amnesia the Bunker is, like, genuinely, like, harrowingly terrifying. Like, it is cripplingly scary. Uh, I then. watched the streamer no play it, and I didn't feel like it was cripplingly scary. Granted, I wasn't the one playing it and you've got commentary and you've got chat so maybe i wasn't in the right space to really feel terrified but it didn't seem that bad well to i me. i am i am a grade a pussy so i think maybe it would be for me do it <laughs> i should i really do should it. do it anyway uh well is is that is that how we're rounding this out or we got more to talk about i think that's i think that's a good place to stop if you want i'm feeling okay. pretty good if you're on the no, that was a fun episode. We, 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 got a little, we got a little off the rails at times, but this was fun. Kiriath episodes are a lot of fun. Kiriath episodes require off the rails. Shy, <laughs> never speak of Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon! Ever. It's so... Let's talk about it! I got, they have like... the Militarum Mechanicus or whatever the hell it was called. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mad, dude. So... <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so I've never I've never been like a defensive fanboy of my property until then. Now I'm just I'm genuinely upset. You Genuine know, question. If, if if I Please. shut my brain off, it was enjoyable eye candy-ish, kind of. It was a pretty movie anyway. I hate shut your brain off of? arguments. It's like if I if I was a fish, I would enjoy the film. Like congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a genuine question. Can you mm -hmm. remember? anything about that film like i'm talking plot i'm talking names of characters can you remember yes. anything important oh, so i here's how i remember the plot is because essentially it is kind of a riff on seven samurai uh or the magnificent seven it just in a sci-fi setting it's so basically you can remember the same other plot. films that it copied but I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember uh, names, though. You're right. I, I remember, remember one name. name. I remember one guy's name because his name was Belisarius, you hack. Oh, that's right. That's oh. Belisarius. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. fair enough. I remember that. And there's the, there's the Emperor and, you know. The Justice League movie sucks balls, including the Snyder Cut. Never that, saw I mean, either one, to be honest with I've you. I've never seen a director so completely over-reliant on slow-mo. It's just it's that's half true. the film. Yeah. He, it he, did, he did 300. He did 300 once and everyone loved it and he can't stop sucking his dick afterwards. It's oh, so man. irritating. <laughs> it's so irritating. I'm, I, I have such a, 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 like a palpable dislike for Zack Snyder films. Like You have no <laughs> idea. I but, would have enjoyed it more as a guilty pleasure if it did not have as much slow-mo. I, I will say that. It was exciting excessive slow-mo like if it's a really important scene sure okay you know really but it's like bar fight someone gets punched and they fall over a table and they do that in slow-mo it's like why why'd you why, what's important to put mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. thing that made it more tolerable than Justice League was the fact that at least you didn't have to hear Wonder Woman's theme tune every time the slow mo happened. <laughs> I I it's started out quite movie. liking I, it, I, I, and I then could, I I can sit through it for I, just you know just dumb action fun. You know? <laughs> okay, every you'd... single time she did anything, the music right. played. Ugh. I I should never ever say anything bad about Hans Zimmer. But in the first in the first part of Dune, when just randomly you'd hear like the Hi-ya! like screeching background <laughs> sound, just like all the time, it kind of kind of kind of grew at me a little bit. I was like, "Good God, dude!" 
We also got Fair bagpipes enough. though, so a totally, a totally legit trade in my, in my eye. <laughs> the, oh yeah, and and that, yeah. hamburger <laughs> cheeseburger whopper whopper hamburger <laughs> with a side <laughs> of fries. Whopper, 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 whopper. <laughs> All right, we should We're end so here. stupid. I was going to say, that should just be where it cuts. <laughs> yeah, just just cut it at Whopper. Whopper.